When it comes to war coverage, are U.S. journalists providing enough independent analysis of foreign conflicts? Hello, I'm Arnon Nidum in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. Newspaper and television reporters have been criticized over the years, especially during times of war and military conflict. What is the responsibility of a free press? Fourteen years ago, critics say the U.S. media was partly to blame for not asking tough questions during the run-up to the Iraqi war, when U.S. President George W. Bush claimed Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein had a ready stockpile of weapons of mass destruction. Once again, critics say the media is not doing its job following this month's U.S. Tomahawk cruise missile operation in Syria, which was prompted by the suspected chemical attack on Syrian civilians. Within hours of the missiles being fired, a number of broadcasters were quick to praise U.S. President Donald Trump. Farid, it's day 78 of the Trump presidency. What changed last night? I think uh, Donald Trump became president of the United States. I think this was actually a big moment. But we see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over to this airfield. That was some of the coverage after that airstrike. Earlier, I spoke with former U.S. Ambassador Peter Galbraith to get his thoughts on how the American media covered the Iraq war. Ambassador Galbraith, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. You have been blistering in your criticism of the Bush administration uh, for what was a very costly and bungled war in Iraq. But today on the show, we're looking at the role of the media uh, in this march to war. Did the media, as CNN put it, check its skepticism at the door and trumpet the claims of top officials and unnamed sources as fact? Yes, I, I think they did. Probably the biggest um, point was to check common sense at the door. Uh, the, the core issue was not whether Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. The issue was whether Iraq had nuclear weapons. It was perfectly reasonable to presume that Iraq had chemical weapons. It, after all, had used them again in the Iran-Iraq war and against the Kurds. But weapons, chemical weapons, uh, are, are, you know, are very limited utility, particularly against um, modern armies. The real issue was nuclear weapons. Once the inspectors were back in Iraq, there was no chance that Iraq could hide a nuclear weapons program, because it requires a large industrial facility, and, um, uh, and that can't escape inspection. Uh, and there were many other situations where the media really didn't pick up, uh, with some exceptions, uh, uh, the lack of planning and, and many of the things that led to the disaster that Iraq is today. There is one view that the U.S. media was duped uh, and put in a sort of intolerable situation where it could be accused of being unpatriotic if it criticized or questioned the intentions of the White House. The other view, uh, as former New York Times journalist Chris Hedges wrote in his book, War is a Force That Gives Us Meaning, is that the notion that the press was used in the war is incorrect. The press wanted to be used. It saw itself as part of the war effort. Do you agree? I think the press wanted to be part of the story. Uh, and they took, uh, too uncritically, what was fed to them by the administration. I have to say, the administration, uh, you know, undoubtedly believed its own propaganda. Uh, but there were journalists, notably uh, uh, Jonathan Landay at McClatchy, whom I knew from his time covering the Balkans, a really intrepid uh, and smart reporter who, who got the story right. Could anyone, including the media, have known the consequences of this war in Iraq? I mean, the charitable view is that war is messy, and as some administration officials have said, we went in with the best of intentions, but it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. Uh, well, there's, there's a difference between the cliché, uh, uh, no plan survives the first encounter 
with uh, the enemy and what happened in Iraq where there was no planning at all. And uh, here the media and academics uh, and, and even the Congress did not bear down on what was the core mistake, which was the absence of any serious planning for what they would do once they got to Baghdad. As a, a friend of mine uh, uh, said, we didn't invade Iraq, the country. We invaded uh, the Iraq of our dreams, a place that we imagined to exist. Uh, and we were ignorant of the reality. And well, you know, when we knocked the kaleidoscope in all sorts of new ways, we were surprised. The ignorant are always surprised. So you know, if there had been a focus on uh, you know, with some realistic reporting and challenging the administration. What's going to happen in Kurdistan? Do you really think the Kurds are going to accept being part of Iraq? What about the, the Shiites? Uh, uh, are, aren't they going to be Iran's uh, allies? Are the Sunnis just going to accept the ouster? Uh, somebody challenging the assumption that the police would just continue to function when the Americans got there rather than disappear. I mean, there was a, there was a real lack of analysis as to what was likely to happen. And if we look at all the analysis that was done uh, after the war, uh, the media believed the Bush administration's distortions, its lies. Uh, but there was a piece in Salon.com written by Gary Camille in which he said, the press's most notable failure was its inability to determine why this disastrous war was ever launched. Uh, in that respect, how did this affect American public opinion? If the public was well informed, if it knew the reasons for going to this war, or lack thereof, would this war have taken place? Well, I think if people had known there was no real threat from Iraq, uh, it would be very hard to justify the war. And of course, when it was clear that Iraq did not have a nuclear weapons program because there were inspectors, and with inspectors you couldn't hide it, you know, that this is something the media could have uh, and should have picked up on. But the disaster is not just the decision to go to war. It is the everything that followed from it. And what followed from it was predictable. I, the, the, uh, we, we wouldn't be having this conversation if the war had gone the way the Bush administration dreamed it would, fantasized it would. Uh, you know, even if there were no weapons of mass destruction, had this been a conflict in which you know, uh, a few hundred American soldiers had died, uh, gone into Baghdad, got rid of Saddam Hussein, who was you know, a, a mass murderer, indisputably a terrible figure, and Iraq had emerged as a stable democracy, uh, you know, we, we, we wouldn't be having this discussion. So it isn't just uh, a focus on the misrepresentation of the threat from Iraq, but it is all, one should also focus on the fact that there was no planning for what followed. And in short, even if, the, even if there had been a threat from Iraq, uh, what, going into Iraq was, was still a disaster because there wasn't a way to accomplish what the Bush administration wanted to accomplish. Would it be fair to say that if we look at the broad role of the media, that at some point journalism morphed into state propaganda? Or is that being a bit too harsh? I, th I think that's being too harsh. I mean, I think what you, what you have, at first there were journalists who were very courageous. Uh, and did a very good uh, uh, job uh, covering the story. Actually, I went to Baghdad in April of uh, 2003 as part of an ABC News investigative team led by Brian Ross. And we were reporting right from the start the lack of planning, the uh, looting, the, the fact that uh, sites that Colin Powell had identified as uh, uh, places where there are biological weapons, that, that they were looted because there was no plan to protect the sites that were supposedly so dangerous. So there was a lot of reporting. And I also would draw the distinction between the reporters who went into Iraq uh, and those who were in Washington. Those who went into Iraq, particularly those who were not embedded with the military, that is, who went on their own, they, they began to get the story. The, the, the propaganda aspect really came from uh, the, the journalists, uh, the, the very large press corps that's covering the White House, the State Department, the, the, the Pentagon, and the CIA, and who are taking what is fed to them. Uh, and this, this is a real problem, because it, you know, they, they, these journalists, they want to get a scoop. Uh, and the, the way they get a scoop is to get their source, to give them something sensational. They want to write it in the most sensational way. Uh, and uh, 
you know, it often turns out that that isn't true. This, this is why so much of the media about Iraq's w, WMD was hyped. If a reporter got the story and didn't hype it, well, then he wouldn't get his source to give him stuff the next time. It seems here yeah, there was an intention to control the message, not just the message, but the messenger as well. If we look, for instance, at the Vietnam War and the role that the media played there in bringing that war to an end, those reports from journalists like Walter Cronkite and others like David Halberstam, it played a big role in shaping American public opinion. But here in the Iraq War, we had this concept of the embedded journalist. Uh, we had rules that said no pictures of the dead. No pictures of coffins returning to Dover Air Force Base. It, in a certain way, sanitized the war. And the media was complicit in that, wasn't it? Well, first, I, I think the, the, there were two major complicities. Uh, the first was when people inside the administration gave to reporters, reporters generally with whom they had relations, relationships, uh, gave them stories and, and information that they wanted the journalist to hype. And the journalist, eager for a, a, a um, scoop, eager to get on page one, uh, hyped the threatening news about Iraq, about Iraq's WMD. Uh, 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 the, uh, the, the worst kind of reporting is the hyping that goes of, of stuff that's leaked about intelligence uh, and, and from the CIA. Uh, because those reporters, uh, they, they, are, they, they get their rewards by doing what their sources want done, which again is to hype, hype the story. So that was one problem. The second problem was the embedded journalist uh, who is uh, accompanying the, the soldiers. Uh, inevitably, when you're with your, with, with, with your, with, with your fellow soldiers uh, or soldiers in a humpy, uh, you know, you, there's a camaraderie that develops. And so they're there telling the good story about the, the, the brave Americans and the battles and their successes and the heroism, the rescue of Jessica Lynch, which of course turned out not to happen. Uh, so that's a second uh, set of problems. Uh, uh, in terms of the sanit sanitizing the story, uh, well, at first, I think the, 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 there were photos of the bodies returning at, at Dover. Uh, and then there were journalists who were neither embedded, who weren't part of the Washington establishment, right. who did tell the story. I mean, the, the, the story has not been a good one out of Iraq. Yeah. So there are people who told the story.